me. This is my return for Tuesdays at 12 o'clock, or excuse me, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I forgot that I'm behind on schedule. So um, today we need a access to a wall or a beam and our stick mobility bundle along with a towel and then access to either a bench or a step. So getting started, we're gonna begin with one of our long sticks for our warm up. You're gonna come into your core stance. So I want you to grip the ground with your feet, soften into the knees, and we're gonna take our long stick, wide grip, and pull apart, activating our posterior chain. We're gonna go into a few shoulder dislocates, and I wanna point out that your rib cage is closed, your chin is neutral, and as the stick crosses over the forehead, you're gonna then push into the stick right about there. And again, pull apart, everything nice and neutral, all fingers staying in contact, and you only go back to where you're comfortable, like so. So you can see me from that side view, I have the ability to go all the way back, but you don't need to do that. You really have to find where you're comfortable, work with your natural range of motion, and again, I'm keeping my shoulders down and really focusing on not compensating and just taking the joint through that full range of motion to where you personally are comfortable. Now I'm gonna face the camera again, parking the stick on my right hip because I'm aware that the camera flips me. So even though this is my left side, I'm gonna call it my right side. I'm gonna pull apart and begin a little bit of a circle, mobilizing the shoulders so that left elbow bends, right arm raises, switches over to the other side, and then following through. Nice big circle. We're gonna start with a few on this side, then transition to the other side. Perfect, let's do one more. And then take a moment, other side. So you start from now left going over towards your right side, still maintaining that core stance. In our focus work for our strength work, we're gonna be doing some core and a lot of legs today. But I wanna make sure that we mobilize our shoulders and our upper body too. So let's do two more. Nice and controlled, good. One more, perfect. Coming through center, take a second, shake it out. Now we're gonna go into like a standing bridge modification. I'm gonna go on profile here. I have my right hand on the end of the stick and then my left hand on the orange part of the stick. Going into the horse stance, really gripping the ground with the feet, so I highly recommend that you're barefoot or wearing like a minimalist sneaker. I want you to bend into the knees, squeeze your glutes. You're gonna rotate your torso to your left, place the stick to the floor, and then press out going into like a bow and arrow position. So that top arm is pulling back, I'm looking over my left shoulder and I'm pressing out with that left arm, setting the hips forward and that left shoulder is nice and relaxed. Slowly come out of it. And then I'm gonna slide again, my left hand to the black part of the stick, right hand onto the orange, starting square, pushing into the feet, hips forward, lean back, find that spot and going into that nice bridge stretch. Hold for a moment. Drawing back with that top arm, pushing out with the bottom arm, and then coming through center once again. One more on each side. Hips forward, stick to the floor, push back. So I've got that top arm pulling, bottom arm pushing, and then I'm pressing my hips forward. This feels so good. Hold for a breath or two, and then we're slowly gonna come out of it and going up and over to the other side. One more, squaring off first, grip the ground, start to lean, place the stick to the floor, press out with that bottom arm, pull back with the top arm, looking upward towards the ceiling or over the shoulder. Excellent, slowly coming through center. So we're just gonna mobilize our feet for a moment we're reclaiming our horse stance. You're gonna take your right hand on top, 
left hand on the bottom, and I just want you to start to pedal out and really work into the toes. So as you releve, we're warming up the fascia in our feet, the foot ankle complex. Let's do one more up and over to the other side, working into those toes. So take your time, nice high heel lift. You'll feel a little stretch and work into the calf. Shoulders are down and back. Good, let's do three more on this side. One, up two, and then after the third, we're gonna go back over to the other side and start to circle. Big circle, we're gonna go counterclockwise first. So it's important to note that the hip is not initiating the movement, nor the knee. So we wanna initiate the movement of that circle coming from the toes, and then pause through center. And then now we're gonna go clockwise. Again, working right into the feet, maintaining your posture. Let's do three more, inward one, inward two, inward three, and lower. Now we're gonna go over to the other side, starting counterclockwise first. Begin with that big toe, and then circle around. Notice if you're starting to compensate by moving the hip and knee first, so I always say in class, you kind of want to take some notes. Find out where your sticky spots are or where you need to kind of draw attention to, and we'll see if we could address them. And now go inward, clockwise. Perfect. And I could already feel how this right side is not as fluid as my left side. Let's do three more. Circle in one. Circle in two. One more. Take a moment. Shake it out, and we're just gonna do a few calf raises together. So switch your top hand, come into your horse stance, so the tailbone is tucked under, seat is engaged, so you're firing your glutes, pack those shoulders, and find a focal point. Both heels are gonna lift and lower. This is gonna be important for later in class as we go into our dumpy squats with calf raises. So I'm pushing down into the ground with about 30% of my strength. Let's do two more, good. Last one, perfect. Shake it out. And now we're going into a bow and arrow uh, variation. So I'm going into what's from my yoga days, a warrior pose. Your left foot is gonna face forward towards me, that's lengthened, and the right foot is gonna turn out. Your heel is gonna be right below that knee. Now sometimes the tendency is to twist the hips and I want you to focus on finding the alignment where both hips are facing forward and you're able to maintain your alignment with the tailbone. So the tailbone is under. Your stick is gonna come out from the right foot maybe about an inch or two and then we're gonna take our top left hand, reach up high on the stick, bottom right hand is gonna find that sticker. So Going into a variation of that bow and arrow, I'm gonna lunge forward while my hips still face forward, and then look upward towards the ceiling. So we're kind of building off that bridge variation that we started with, and as we come out of it, you're not hyperextending that inside left knee, that knee stays soft, tailbone stays under, and then again, re-bend, pull back going just a little bit deeper into the stretch. Very nice. And then lengthen once again. Release the hands and let's go in it for one more time. Inhale, exhale, deep bend into that right knee, tailbone under, draw back. So now I'm really feeling that lat being packed on that top left arm. Hold here and then lengthen. Sorry, my allergies are so bad today. <laughs> I'm just gonna have a quick sip of water. Then we're gonna go up and over to the other side. We're reclaiming our warrior pose. So the right foot facing forward, and now the left foot is facing out. Finding our alignment, take the tailbone, take it under, hips forward towards me. So your stick is gonna be again out from the center of the foot near the big and second toe, maybe about an inch or two. That top right arm holds up high, bottom left arm finds that sticker. 
sending the hips out towards your right, and then you're gonna bend significantly into that left knee. Look upward towards the ceiling. Notice if you're hiking up that bottom shoulder, right? We want that shoulder down and back. Pause for a moment. And then we lengthen without hyperextending that knee. Take another breath. Inhale, exhale, push down into the stick and go deeper into your stretch. Hold here for a moment. Good. Take a second, lengthen, and one more. Really focus this time on packing that top right shoulder, getting into that lat, gripping the ground with the feet, tailbone under, looking upward, and then slowly come out of it. Heel toe in safely so you protect your hips. Now we're gonna use access to the wall now, getting into our knee down lunge, but we're also gonna work on stretching out our front line. I have right here a towel against my furniture, that's kind of what I have access to here. We're gonna begin with our left leg forward, right leg back in a knee down lunge. I want you to find a position where you're able to take your hands to the top of your stick mobility sticks. While you're here, that back right foot, you're gonna to go top of the foot down. And then I want you to scoop out your middle. So you're tucking that tailbone under, thinking of that right hip as a headlight. It's gonna face straight forward. What we're gonna do now is take a deep breath in through the nose, and then exhale through the nose or the mouth. Take those arms out to the side. I'm pushing about 20, 30% into the sticks, getting into my chest line. Now I'm gonna sweep this top right arm up. Take this outside left hand that's closer to you down and I'm gonna come across. Really opening up those lateral lines and I'm keeping again the glute engaged. So I call it like sticky rib syndrome. Right, so we're really getting into the rib cage. Reach, come back through center, pull back for a moment, and one more time. Deep inhale through the nose, your choice if you're gonna exhale through the mouth or through the nose. I like diaphragmatic breathing for the most part when I'm training, so I typically exhale through the nose. And then we're gonna sweep across. No tension in your neck. So take a moment, take your eyes down Keep that right hip again facing forward. So to scan your body. Good. And then come back through center. Changing sides. We now have our right leg forward and the left leg back. Top of the foot is down. Scoop that tailbone under. And immediately you should feel that left hip. While you're here, inhale, exhale, Go deeper into the stretch. You might have to wiggle that front foot a little bit further forward. And again, my palms are pushing forward into the sticks, getting a nice stretch through the chest. Then I'm gonna take my outside left arm, the one that's closer to you, and I'm gonna sweep it up and over towards my right side, and that right stick is gonna drop down. Continue to go into that position, and slowly, come up through center. We're gonna do this one more time. Scan your body, so you're driving down through that front foot, engage that glute, scoop that tailbone under, press into the sticks, drop the right arm, and sweep the left arm up and over, and then you're gonna look down at the floor, and you're still pushing into those sticks. Excellent. Now we're gonna slowly come up through center, Take a moment. Sticks are gonna now come in front and we're gonna kneel. Before we get into our core exercise, leveraging through the wall, we're just gonna do a few tricep extensions. So we're gonna get into our strength portion now. I'm gonna come in just a little bit so I'm not out of frame. You want your thumbs to be right in line with the shoulders. I'm gonna take my arms up, slide those hands down now, so that they're right in line with the shoulder or slightly under. Tuck the tailbone under. Now I'm pushing into the wall and immediately I already feel like I'm almost in a plank position. My core is turned on. 
I'm gonna keep my eyes neutral, chin neutral. Start to bend the elbows, sweeping forward, and then exhale, press back. Inhale, elbows come in closer to the stick. Exhale, press back. So it'll take a few. Find your alignment, right? The lower you go, the more intense. Drawing it in, keeping engaged, good. Inhale forward, exhale, press back. So I've got 30, 40, at the bottom 50% of my strength going into the floor, maybe a little bit more, and I press back. One more. Deep breath in, spine stays long, chest stays open, and press back. Nice work. So we're gonna take our long sticks right now to the side and use our short stick. Getting into a rotational high plank. Because I can't fully turn around, I'm gonna be demonstrating both sides facing the camera, working the rotation going towards my right. But it'll look like the left on the, on the camera. So if you have your short stick, you're gonna leverage it to the wall. You're gonna have an overhand grip so that we're, we get into our high plank. You're gonna feel that activation of your lat and that shoulder is gonna stay packed. Take your right hand, so right hand is gonna be on the ground, your left hand is gonna be on the edge of the stick, palm facing down. Walk the legs back so that you're in a high plank, but the legs are separated into a V. What I want you to do is keep your hips nice and stable. That left hand below that shoulder. We're gonna to begin to pivot, and as we do so, the hand now is gonna to go to the top of the stick. I'm pushing in. Everything is a step. So my hips are stacked even though my feet are staggered. My hip is not dropping. I'm elevating that hip, and then I'm gonna close off into the plank. Realigning, staying nice and square. So we're gonna do four more of these. You're in your high plank. Begin that rotation. Push into the stick. Hold. And now slowly square off through center. So I'm just gonna cue you through this. I want you to do this again. So we have three more. Palms, find that alignment, begin that rotation, push into the stick, everything is stacked. And then again, close off. Two more, hold. And if you want to make it more challenging, you could always elevate that top leg. So there are ways to regress and progress these options. Good. Take a moment, lower the knees, shake it off, and adjust to go over to the other side. So I'm not going to turn around. I'm going to continue to face the camera. So set yourself up. Grab water if you need it. We have, again, now right palm is gonna be on the floor and the left hand is gonna be on the stick. Or excuse me, left hand on the floor, right on the stick. Setting up for your plank, I'm already pushing into that wall, so I've got that lat activated. Rotate and stack, and then slowly square off through center. Take your time. Rotate, stack, very nice. And exhale, recenter. Take a breath, deep inhale. Exhale, rotate, perfect. Working right through center. You have three more. Deep breath in, exhale as you rotate. Again, everything is lined up. If you wanna make it more challenging, that top leg is gonna lift, and you're gonna flex that foot, stacking the hips, and then close off. Two more. Again, scan your body so that palm is right below the shoulder line. You're feeling that connection to the lat on the left and the lat on the right. So each side is working. And again, you're gripping the ground with your feet. In that plank position, you're gonna have a slight tuck of that tailbone so that we continue to light up the front line of our body. So we're really working through that pelvic floor. So that should be the last one. Now we're gonna to come to standing with a single stick going into an RDL. 
And we're gonna use a little bit of leverage with the four. Just slide this back for a second. <clears throat> my right hand is gonna be, uh, excuse me, underhand. My left hand is gonna be overhand. Standing nice and tall, I'm gonna lift and elevate my left foot. As I start to hip hinge in my RDL, this left hand is going to put some tension. I'm going to create cross body tension. That left hand is going to come across to the right. I square off and then slowly come to stand. So we're going to perform five of these on each side. Setting up your position, underhand, overhand, standing tall. Lift your left foot, find your focal point, and now push, bending that stick, stay parallel. Now I'm pulling back with that top right arm, hold, one, two, and then slowly return to stand. Excellent, let's do this four more times. So you're hip hinging, push into the stick, you're pulling back with that top arm, nice and parallel, and then slowly come back to standing. Continue on, I just have to grab myself a tissue. We've got the uh, flow knees and zero tech going strong today. And let's do two more. Push, you're nice and level. So I'm firing that back seat and then slowly drive up. Good, one more, make it count. Pushing across, pulling with that top arm. Stay nice and parallel, grip the ground with the foot. Let's hold this one a little bit longer. Hold one, hold two, hold three, four. One more count and drive up. So now we're gonna switch over to the other side. We'll finish the five with a five count hold. Top hand, underhand, bottom hand, overhand. Stand tall. Find your focal point first. When you're ready, begin that hip hinge. You're gonna drive force into the stick, coming across, but you're nice and parallel. Hold, flex that back foot, slowly drive up. So I want you to feel that connection with the fascia in the bottom of your foot. Strengthening your foot ankle complex. Noticing if you have a tendency to fight the hip line where you're opening the hip instead of staying parallel. Slowly come up. Again, push. Good. That bottom knee has a softness to the knee, so I want you to be mindful that you're not hyperextending into the knee joint. We have two more, and then we're going to finish with that longer hold. Good. Drive up. One more, nice and strong. Now push into the ground, find that cross body tension. So I'm pulling with the hand that is under hand hold and then I'm pushing down with the other hand. Hold five, hold four, hold three, two, on one, begin to drive up. Good, shake it out for a moment and now we're going into our dumpy squats. So access to the ceiling or a beam, <coughs> you're going to step in, toes are going to be slightly turned out. We're going to add the calf raise. So as we're coming up out of our squat, we're going to go into a releve, working our feet just like we did as part of our warm up. So I'm driving now, I want you to think of 70% up to 80% of your strength. The dumpy squat is excellent. It's a great way to warm up. It's a great way to also use um, as an assessment for mobility when you're working with a client. And it's a great primer for like goblet squats. So here we go. We're going to take ourselves, descend, pull yourself into the bottom of the squat. Watch your alignment so you're not swallowed up by your shoulders. Your shoulders are down, elbows are in, eyes are forward. Inhale, exhale. Now you're going to pull yourself away from the squat, from the earth. Releve, hold. Flat feet once again. Push into the stick. Descend slowly. 
into your squat. While you're at the bottom, scan your body. As you begin to press up out of your squat, releve, hold at the top. I'm still driving energy into the ceiling. Flat foot once again. Push, come down, chin neutral. Good. Mindful of your alignment. Drive up, flat feet. Now we're gonna do three with the other hand on top. So switch, find your position, drive up into the wall, pull yourself into the squat. Notice your alignment with your pelvis, very important. Chin neutral, drive up, pause at the top, flat feet once again. Two more times, lower, lower, Good. Come up. Calf raise. So you can even start your calf raise on a few. I started low, right as I was coming out of the squat. In others, I waited for a moment. So you can play around with those at home, those two variations. Coming up out of it, then releve, or releve from the bottom, and then coming up out of your squat. So our next exercise, we're going to grab our bench. Let me just grab this one here. And we're going to use our short stick. We're going to work some single leg drill, Bulgarian split squat. <coughs> so if you have access to a couch or a, a chair or step, please grab it now. We're going to begin with our right leg forward left leg back. Overhand hold on our shorter stick. I'm going to take my right leg forward and my left foot is going to go face down on the bench. Eyes are going to be forward so you have to kind of find your alignment and I'm going to pull apart on the stick activating my, my posterior. So I'm working through those back muscles. Chin is neutral I'm going to come all the way down until when my knee taps the ground and I'm going to push into the stick as I come out of it. So we're going to do six on each side. Pull apart, descend on like a two or three count, slowly come up. Good. Pull apart, tap all the way down to the ground or just shy of the ground, push into the stick, slowly come up. Pull apart and push. Good, feel that activation, pull apart, eyes forward, push. We have two more. Try to ignore that back leg, really drive up through that front leg. Good, one more, pull apart, and drive up. Excellent, changing sides. I'm just gonna slide this back for a second. So now we have our left leg forward, right foot down, Find your position, pull apart on the stick, good, and then squeeze. Pull apart, nice, drive up. For myself, I know that I can really feel the difference between my right and left side. My left side is a lot stronger and more stable. There we go, pull apart push. I believe there's two more. If we're doing an extra one, hey, that's all good. <laughs> one more. Pull apart. Perfect. Push. Excellent. Shake it out. Woo, those feel good. Okay, we're coming down and finishing our strength portion with a few prone, with a few prone, um, shoulder presses. I love this drill. So I have a thicker towel. I'll demonstrate. Six in front. You're going to go onto your belly in a V shape. And I want you to be mindful that you're not feeling pressure in your lower back. Now I have, and like I mentioned it earlier in class, I have excessive range of motion that I've really had to learn how to control over the years. So I know I'll have a tendency to sometimes go too high with this. Don't worry <laughs> how high I'm going. 
I want you to think of raising above the back of the head, pulling back with control, and pressing forward with control. So you have your stick, you're gonna put your forehead down, your grip is overhand. I think I've gotta slide back so the camera doesn't cut this off. Um, and I want you to pull apart, come up, pull, activating those back muscles, and then press forward, pushing into the stick, and lower. So we're gonna do six of these. I have my legs together, squeezing the glutes, slight tuck of that tailbone so I don't wanna get into my lower back. So, forehead down, pull apart on a stick. I'm gonna keep my head up so you can hear me. Pull back, activate those back muscles. Remember, your head is down, chin is neutral. Push forward, start to press into the stick, and lower. So we have five more. Pull apart, all fingers on, getting into that back, beautiful. Come forward, push into the stick, and lower, four more. Pull apart, elevate, squeeze, push. Try to maintain that height, and lower. Good, just two more. Pull apart, elevate, draw back, take it forward, and lower. Last one, make it count. Up, pull, draw it back, take it forward, push, and gently lower. Love that exercise. I did a lot of it when I was uh, competing in kettlebell sport, and I still do that stick mobility prone press to really balance out a lot of the club uh, swinging that I do, mace swinging, and kettlebell work. So, one of my staples. We're gonna get into a quick ab exercise, then we're gonna get into our stretching. So using our short stick, lay on back, make sure you have room. I have the stick in my right hand, but I'm gonna push the stick into my left thigh. Before I even get started, I want you to remember that we're not going to have this massive anterior tilt. We're going to have to draw our navel in, flatten out that back, push that right leg forward, flex, and the curl comes forward. Now, the right leg is just going to lift and lower. So, I just adjusted, I fixed myself that left heel should be right in line with the knee. Holding that, scooping out the middle. Perfect, let's do two more. Push, push with that top arm. You should be shaking. One more, and lower. Nice work. Take a second, knees to each side. And now we switch. That left hand has a stick, and it's gonna press into the right thigh right in the center, flex that foot, curl comes up, scoop out your center. And now again, very important to note, you're not letting go of that lower back. So the more pressure you push, you have that slight tuck of your tailbone, it is hard. Three more, inhale, exhale, up one, stay with it. Inhale, exhale, up two, one more, perfect and recover. We're gonna take that short stick to our side, grab the pillow that you just used, and we're gonna go into a nice T-spine stretch. So you have your towel in front. I normally use um, a smaller towel or a glider, so hopefully this glides. You're in a kneeling position. Toes are together, but you've created a V with the legs. With your short stick, you're uh, holding under hand hold. And now, because of the, uh, being direct with the camera, I'm gonna say this is my left side. Take the left over to your right. Let me just back up a little bit. You're going to slide out, lowering that left shoulder to the floor, and then pull back, looking upward towards the ceiling. 
I love this stretch. It feels so good. Hold here for a breath or two, and then you're going to come up and switch to the other side. Starting position. So here we go. Right is going to go over to the left. That is going to slide out, and then you're going to center your shoulder. Draw back. Breathe into the stretch. So I'm pulling this top hand or the stick into my body, looking upward towards the ceiling. Good. One more breath, and then you would slide back through center. Well done. Before we stand up to finish, we're going to go into straddle. I like incorporating straddle often because <laughs> It's one position that a lot of people avoid. <laughs> so we're gonna take our stick to the arch of both feet. It's better to be barefoot than to have your shoes on. Cross one hand over the other, it doesn't matter which one. And if you need to, if you're really struggling to sit up tall, take your folded towel or a pillow and sit on it. Use that as a bit of like a bolster and bend those elbows in towards the body. Keep the feet flexed. So uh, much like George, George is like, I don't think he's got any tens or, tendons or ligaments in his body. He is so mobile and flexible. So he goes really wide out into a straddle. I can too when it comes to straddle, but I'm just gonna dial it back today. I want you to change that flex to a point. And when you're pointing, Cross over the top of the stick and really feel the back line light up. Notice if you were able to sit up a lot taller, that's important too. Keep drawing back. Now, when you change to a flex, you may find that you could wiggle back another inch or two and it's becoming a little bit more comfortable. So we're sitting tall. Try not to roll into an anterior tilt. Keep that front line engaged. Right, no rounding through the center. Flex, keep pulling back. And now one more time, point. Now when you push down again, you'll feel that engagement. Inner thighs are working hard. Keep the point, and now take the chest forward an inch or two. Hold here. Good. And then, we slowly come out of it. Take a moment, lower the stick. Slide the stick forward. Don't shock your hips. Take hold underneath the knees, slide them in, and then do just a little body weight. You can use your hands, a little 90-90. Think of that knee going to 12 o'clock in the center. Just a couple more. Right there, good. Shoulders down and back, chest open. Perfect. Come in a stand. We're going to do two variations of our bow and arrow. So bow and arrow was strong in our session today. Typical bow and arrow, you're going to take the stick to the outside of your right foot, maybe about two to three inches, left hand, right hand. Now, begin with those hips. So hips up first, then press. Draw back, take that tailbone under, and now I want you to take your chest through. So rotate upward towards the ceiling and access a bit of that front line as you're working that lateral line. Hold. Now, rotate, take the stick, pause here. We're gonna intensify the stretch down into the hip and into those lateral lines. Now we're gonna cross that outside foot. That left foot comes over the right. Grip the ground with the feet. Squeeze and engage those thighs together. Walk the stick out a little bit. And now go into your bow and arrow. Again, leading with the hips first. I've been doing a ton of rowing on the rowing machine, and this one is kind of like my go-to and then slowly come out of it. Perfect. Other side, you're wider than hip width. Stick is out about three inches or so. Top right hand, find up high. 
Left hand, low. Now that right hip is going to press up first, then we follow it through with the arms. Different from before, now we're going to again scoop under. So there's a little bit of rotation. Look upward towards the ceiling. So as you can see, my left hip here is rotating inward and then square off towards the camera and then slowly come out of it. Your right foot now simply crosses over, grip the ground with the feet and go into the bow and arrow here, close stance. Inner thighs are pressed together, feet are gripping the ground, tailbone is still tucked under. Notice that bottom shoulder, it's relaxed and you're pulling with that top arm. Hold and now slowly come out of it. Good, take a second, shake it out. We're gonna take our stick now to the swell of our lower back. We're about in the stance that would be our setup for a kettlebell swing or a squat, so we're slightly wider than hip width. I'm gonna push into the stick, hip hinge forward, flat back. Now, this right side, I'm gonna glide as far over to the left as possible while maintaining the squareness to my hips. So you could find that spot. Now you're getting a nice stretch again through that front line, a little bit of stretch into the T-spine that we uh, addressed earlier. Now look up towards the ceiling and then down towards the floor. So always finding these positions that if you begin to articulate your neck, then I feel like the, the tension that we hold in our shoulders and in our neck needs, begins to relax. We really get into that fascia. Good. Pause. Come through center. You can come out of it if needed. And then transition to the other side. So I'm holding low with that left hand. Top right arm is really getting that stretch. And again, breathing. This is where I practice the diaphragmatic breathing. So breathing through the nose looking upward towards the ceiling, and then down to the floor. Again, upward towards the ceiling, and then downward towards the floor. Come through center, push into the feet, slowly, slowly come up. Now we're finishing our stretching with uh, hamstrings. So we're gonna do two sticks. Grab your other long stick, we're gonna use the leverage of the wall once again to wrap up class. And as you can see, I created train tracks by having the sticks rest gently on my shoulders. I'm gonna take my right leg back, left foot forward, and take a moment to square off your hip line. When your hands now go to the stick midway, I want you to roll your shoulders down and back and pack your lats. Then simply glide down, eyes down, chin neutral, then bend into your back right foot, or knee I should say, and then flex the foot of the front leg, your left foot. So go flat, bend, pull back. And then do just a little bit of a windshield wiper. So, the toes stay flexed, heel presses down, you rotate out a little, and you rotate in a little. Up, good. And then in, and realign, flatten the foot. Slowly come up, step in, other leg back. So we don't want our hips to be too off center. Take a moment to set it up first. Then when you have it, again, you're gonna flex, pull back with the hips, lifting the toes of your front right foot, heel stays down, then flatten out. Again, pack those shoulders, maintain that nice length through your torso, and then little corkscrew, little windshield wiper, toes in, toes out. Perfect, just breathe through it. Realign, flat foot, step in, 
and take a moment to stand up and shake it out. Well, I have to admit, after being off the, the radar for a month, I was like a little wonky with the start of class. <laughs> That's what happens when things are live. But I'm so glad to be back, and it feels good to be back, so I'll see you next Tuesday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I don't even know where I was going when I first started class with 12 o'clock. I was thinking about my next appointment, I guess. But uh, if you ever have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And remember to check out the YouTube channel that Stick Mobility has and their Movement Made Better podcast. I'm at kelsbells88 on Instagram, and I've been using Stick Mobility now for over four years. It's one of the best tools, as you already know. So on that note, I look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you.